The generation who were to come of age in the 1960s in the West were part of the baby boom. More births were registered after 1945 than ever before. In America, the number of babies born rose 27% in five years. And millions of children grew up in the security of the long post-war economic boom. Their parents were earning more in steady jobs. The bad memories of the Depression years and the war had been put behind them. Jeff Jones's family lived in Los Angeles. Well, I come from a classic Southern California suburban background. Certainly in my family, the idea was this was kind of as good as it gets. Romain Goupil grew up in the outskirts of Paris. It was very easy. We didn't have any major worries, but we just weren't extravagant. I've no childhood memories of arguments about money for things at school or holidays or outings. In post-war Britain, children were brought up with the security of the new welfare state as the government built more schools and houses. I was brought up on a council estate in the 50s in North Manchester in Blakely. It was very uh, quiet and reserved. There wasn't a great deal of um, action going on. Things were sort of very British and very staid. There was no, um, there was no life as such for, for kids. Kids were very much kept as children. No one starts eating until father has served himself. Let father and mother guide the conversational trend if they desire. After all, they made all this possible. American children were taught to respect their elders. And parents were confident they'd grow up to share the values and support the system that had done so well for them. On Thielen was a child in Southern California. Nixon came into San Luis Obispo and we Boy Scouts greeted him at the airport. And I was one of the ones that got to greet him in my Explorer outfit with my merit badges on there, my Eagle Scout badge. Uh, Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Uh, so I guess that makes an impression on a kid when he grows up, you know. As children grew older, they were still watched over and protected. In Britain, even parents who thought themselves progressive couldn't quite let go. I, I remember when I was young, I had very strict parents. I was allowed to do so very little. And that's why I think I like to see the children enjoying themselves so much. Probably I don't like some of the boyfriends she brings home, but what can I do about it? Let her bring them home, let her compare them with her own people, and then she'll meet, eventually, the type of man that I'd like her to marry. Although girls wanted more freedom, the conventions were slow to change. Carol Kemp grew up in the East End of London. See, when you was 15, you were still a kid. Even though I was at work, um, I still couldn't stay out late, and you didn't have people picking you up. You hung about with the boys from your street, and, um, I mean, I can remember, you just walk up the road, and um, you didn't really have many shops or anything in those days. And you never went into pubs and things like that. And there, when you'd get home, you'd just about had a quick kiss, and that was it. And your mum used to go, come on, Carol, in now. But when, see, when we were kids, you, did, you just didn't... Sex was taboo. I mean, my, my dad never saw my mum undressed. Ready, gentlemen? On your left foot, ladies on the right. One, two, three, one. With contact between the sexes formal and restricted, complicated rituals had to be learned. I was sent to a place called Madame Jones Academy to Dance. And when he walked into the place, there was these footmarks painted on the floor. Black ones and white ones. The white ones were the girls and the black ones were the boys, so you know exactly where your feet had to go. There were rules for everything, and young people were used to obeying them. The ultimate lesson in unquestioning respect for authority came when boys had to enlist for military service, which still continued in most countries. Now, the whole base of discipline in the army is drill. Drill, bosses in you, 
team spirit, alertness, pride in your unit, and pride in yourself. Also, it teaches you to obey words of command instinctively and without question. At the age of 17, 17 and a half, you'd call up into the army. Uh, you could go off, you could fight, you could die, but you couldn't buy a pint of beer. You were too young, you know? Uh, and at the end of your two to three years, you came out, you still couldn't vote, you still had no right to say what happened in the country. This was the thing that really used to frustrate us in many ways. But their fixed, certain, orderly world was overshadowed by one dark threat. The build-up of nuclear weapons, which could bring instant annihilation. Now watch some of the most startling film ever taken, showing the actual record of the destructive force of a nuclear explosion. Two houses are literally blown apart from within. I remember being quite concerned a couple of times when I was home alone and I heard sirens. Oh, gee, I, boy, I hope this isn't the big one. And here are these adults who are supposed to be running the world and taking care of us. And yet, they've obviously done something very crazy to, to put us all into a situation like this. How can you trust them? How can you believe what they say? You know, and clearly the world is in such a bad state. Oh, baby, 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 The young were starting to find ways of defying their elders. A new kind of music, rock and roll, was freer. And it was satisfying that parents hated it. Come on back and let's play a little house so we can act like we did before. It's shocking. I watched him gyrate his legs and swivel his hips. And our parent teachers group feels he should not be on television. There were no set rules in rock and roll. Well, you can do anything but take your mom to lose weight shoes. Martin Algier was at high school in Michigan. I was actually kicked off the dance floor by a chaperone one time, and I think I was probably just dancing very openly, moving, moving my body, and it shocked them, you know. Oh, God, you moved your pelvis, you know. What, you know, and you're supposed to have one, let alone move it. Hey, Johnny, what are you rebelling against? What do you got? <laughs> Sensing a trend, Hollywood began to make films about alienated young men. But defiance could only be taken so far. Even Elvis couldn't escape the long reach of Uncle Sam. Elvis Presley no longer has that rock and roll beat. The tempo is hut, two, three, four for Private Presley. Like any ex-civilian raw recruit, the king of rock and roll will be keeping time to non-hip bugle calls. By the late 1950s, the buying power of the young was recognized and a new word entered the vocabulary. Teenagers, guys and dolls, can be trained in a few weeks to earn eight or ten pounds a week. The shops know it, so every town has a store with teenage departments, thriving on giving the young people the fashions they demand. The gramophone industry cashes in on the well-off teenagers for some tune. Eighty percent of the disc output is bought by the youngsters. That's 50 million records a year in Britain alone. All industry knows that to please the teenagers is the golden way to big dividends. Real wages for the under-21s were ten times higher than before the war, and unemployment had almost disappeared. The employers used to come round to the school a few months before we were due to leave, and you could select what you wanted to be. If you want to be a plumber, join an electrician, mechanic, they're all there. They all wanted apprentices, and it was so easy.